Why does that agree?
Five more minutes, guys. They're about to start right now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are the speakers on? Yeah. Can you hear us in the back? <laughs> As chairman of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, I stand here with my colleagues in the CHC and the Democratic Caucus to urge House Republicans to stop playing politics with the lives of innocent children and work with us to find a bipartisan solution. This week, we have seen a continued lack of compassion from our Republican colleagues for Central American refugee children, Latinos, and the immigrant community. The legislation they put forward yesterday would have rolled back due process protections for young victims of violence. It would have curtailed President Obama's Deferred Action for Child Arrivals program, and it would have militarized our border. But that wasn't enough for the Republican majority. Instead of working with us in our Democratic caucus, House Republicans continue to use the crisis at the border to push forward their extreme agenda. Instead of focusing on providing funding to ensure these children are treated humanely, they want to eliminate the guarantee of due process protection. Instead of working to solve our broken immigration system, House Republicans have refused to put forward the Senate passed immigration bill that they've had before them for more than 13 months. Nor have they considered H.R. 15 that has over 200 bipartisan sponsors. The American people elected us to work together to solve problems. We ask House Republicans once again to 
come to the table and work with us to develop an American solution to the humanitarian crisis along our border. And with that, I yield to the leader of our Democratic Party, Nancy Pelosi from California. Thank you very much, Chairman Hinojosa. To you and the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, I say thank you. You make us so proud uh, of helping us stand up to our responsibilities of this great country. As others say of us, America is great because America is good. Today could have been an opportunity for coming together. We've extended the hand of friendship to the speaker to say, let us work together to get this done. When we saw the path that we were, they were on that was unsustainable and unsupportable from our standpoint. Instead, uh, we have a day where instead of responding uh, to the concerns expressed by the National Catholic United States Catholic Conference of Bishops, the Evangelical Table, the American Bar Association, instead of responding to the, comp uh, the objections they have to this legislation, the Republicans have more moved more uh, 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 to the right, not to the correct, but to the right. And so we have a situation where with all the best intentions of the world in a bipartisan way, in 2008, Democrats and Republicans came together for a bill, the Wilberforce bill, signed by President Bush, signed by a Republican president. We cannot let the message coming out of here be that yes, we want it to be magnanimous and say that we embraced children who might be involved in, in human trafficking and the rest, but if it got to be too many children, well, that was another thing. Uh, so let us respond to the concerns that are expressed about the inadequacy of the resources to meet the needs of the children, the adequacy of resources uh, to meet their do the due process and representation for them and judges uh, to facilitate their either acceptance or repatriation back to their own country. And let us remember that some of these children have been through terribly traumatic situations. And now we're, uh, we can't make matters worse for them. I want to just recall to all of you a paint a picture uh, that C Representative Castro had on the floor of the House today with soldiers with guns pointed at the border. Is that how we say, suffer little children and come unto us? With that, I'm pleased to yield to the distinguished whip, Democratic Whip of the House, Steny Hoyer. Thank you very much, Leader. I am uh, honored to stand here with uh, and Mr. Hinojosa and the Hispanic Caucus. But let me make it very clear, the Hispanic Caucus speaks for all of us, not just for their caucus members, but for the Democratic Caucus, and for millions and millions of millions of Americans who see America as a welcoming, compassionate, humanitarian, fair country. There is a need that exists now Everyone recognizes that the need exists now for resources to ensure that we treat not just children, but all people in a humanitarian fashion. It's unfortunate, therefore, that Republicans are playing partisan games with a bill that has no chance of passing the Senate or being signed into law. In other words, it is simply a message they want to send, not a solution they want to affect. Instead of reaching across the aisle, as the leader has said, and she has reached across to them, uh, as I have done, uh, to see what could pass in a bipartisan way, they continue to move even further and further from the mainstream. We could work together to provide the resources to respond to a crisis and secure the border. And then, as the majority leader said in an op-ed today, we could pursue the regular order and consider legislation, debate it, and have it uh, vetted by the American people. But Republicans are racing to the right, putting forward the harshest and most draconian policies they can think of. This crisis demands an immediate response. And it is also a stark reminder of why we need a long-term solution to our immigration challenge. We ought to be passing comprehensive immigration reform now. Speaker Boehner should allow the House to work its will on both the bipartisan re uh, response to the crisis at the border and the comprehensive immigration reform. I am honored to join my Hispanic uh, caucus members in making that case to the American people. 
and articulating the values that has made America the good and great country that it is. And now I will yield back to Mr. Hinojosa. Thank you, Sonny. I'd like to at this time recognize leader of our party, also um, Javier Becerra from California, Democratic Caucus Chair. Uh, I thank the chairman of the Hispanic Caucus for bringing us all together, and it's all, not just members of the Hispanic Caucus, but all of us who believe we should do things the right way in this country. The corrosive effects of shutdown, do-nothing politics is on full display here in the House of Representatives today. Stripping the rights and protections of children is never a good solution in any legislation. At the same time, it's never a good idea and a good solution to sue the President of the United States for doing his job when you're not willing to do your job here in the House of Representatives. But this is ultimately what happens when for more than 380 days, you let a bipartisan solution to a broken immigration system sit in the House of Representatives. We could have voted on legislation that would have tackled the issues we face down on the border with this humanitarian crisis a year ago but we haven't been able to get a vote on fixing a broken immigration system. It's time to have a vote to fix the broken immigration system and do our jobs the right way. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to, at this time, recognize from the great state of New Mexico, Congressman Ben Ray Lujan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. Yesterday, we saw a House Republican conference that was in disarray because Ted Cruz and a sizable number of their members were not satisfied with the bill that they drafted that would strip away due process from children who are trying to escape the most unimaginable violence that has gripped Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras, the murder capital of the world. The stories of violence, sexual abuse, and human trafficking are heartbreaking. You've reported on them. But it wasn't enough for House Republicans to weaken anti-human trafficking laws taking away the opportunity for these young people to tell their stories. Well, they'll be sending them back to the very traffickers and rapists they're trying to escape. Today, we're hearing from House Republicans that now they want to add provisions to go after dreamers. Children who are brought to this country through no fault of their own and have grown up here in the only home that they have known, contributing to the greatest nation in the world. Rather than working with Democrats in a bipartisan way, House Republicans, again, are giving in to the most extreme wing of their party to bring a mean-spirited bill that will break up families and go after those who want to build a better life for themselves, their families, and their communities. As the Conference on Catholic Bishops said, send them back into a burning building. This time I'd like to recognize someone who has led the Congressional Hispanic Caucus on the theme of immigration reform. For over a decade, our leader, Luis Gutierrez from Chicago, Illinois. Thank you, Ruben. So, for weeks, they have been calling those that have come fleeing murder, mayhem, terror, drug dealers. They have said that they are disease-ridden, lice-filled, gangbangers, drug dealers, mules of the drug cartels who have come here in hordes to invade our nation. And now they are demonstrating that that's how they feel in their legislation. Because they have to go down to the least common denominator of hatefulness towards an immigrant community. And when they say it about the children, they say it about all of us. It is though the Republican caucus that began to reach out after the 2012 November debacle as we reelected President Barack Obama and they said we need to do something different. We need to reach out to that Latino community. We need to sensitize ourselves to their needs. It's as though they have amnesia and have forgotten and have abandoned that road. And they have taken the road of those who will be filled with spitefulness and hatred toward our community. And that's what they will raise. Well, let me make clear on behalf of all of us here that we will soon cure them of that amnesia come this election and every election moving 
forward. Because the way you treat one of us today is the way you have treated all of us. And we will remember that. Lastly, not only do they treat the children that are in such need of protection, it is almost as though they despise and hate all of our children. Because even the children that came before them, that have pledged allegiance to the flag of the United States all of their lives, love this country, and the president has afforded them an opportunity to become legal, they want to put them in an illegal situation, an undocumented situation, even those that America, and let me just suggest to everybody, an election was held in November of 2012 after the president made that decision, and the American people thought it was a good decision. And we are here to affirm it and to say we will not step back. Lastly, hay que ser claro, y nosotros hablamos con una sola voz, no como el caucus congresional hispano, no como demócratas, sino como defensores de nuestro pueblo inmigrante. Esto es ofensivo a nuestra comunidad y nosotros no vamos a tolerar el abuso que ellos tienen contra los niños en la frontera y contra los soñadores, 700 mil de ellos que tienen permiso de trabajo. Los defenderemos todos con todo lo que tenemos. It's with pleasure that I introduce uh, from the great state of California, Jim Costa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank my colleagues of the Hispanic Caucus and thank the leadership that's here today to express from our heart the fact is, is that we have a humanitarian crisis on our border. We have a crisis of, of security and we have a broken immigration system that needs to be fixed and it is long overdue. Earlier this week, I said that it's the height of hypocrisy to be talking my Republican colleagues about border security when for over a year they have been unwilling to put the very vehicle that would provide border security and increase protection in the bipartisan comprehensive immigration reform bill that the Senate passed last year. It's the height of hypocrisy. There were billions of dollars that were provided in that legislation that would have improved our border security and also provided the additional support for humane treatment of these children, these children who are escaping atrocities from Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras, who need our help and support. But, you know, uh, the irony is, of course, should not be lost upon you in the press. It certainly isn't lost upon any of us. On Tuesday, they voted $2 million to sue the president because they say he exceeded his executive authority. But yesterday, House Republican leadership said, you know, we really don't need legislation because if the president used his executive authority, he could fix this problem. Now, I don't get it. Talk about the classic case of wanting to have it both ways. Which is it? The fact is, is that uh, members from their own party, a colleague of mine from California, I think said it best this morning, was quoted in Political. He says, you know, um, we have a lot of lawmakers here who aren't interested in governing. Uh, you just had a lot of members who don't want to vote for anything, the California lawmaker said. They're not interested in governing. We have a lot of members here who just don't want to vote for anything. We have to get 218 votes or you can't pass anything. We just put some new leadership team with new whip people and, and the same roadblocks every time. I guess maybe some of them are as frustrated as we are. Let me finally comment that that is cynical. It is not only height of hypocrisy, but it's cynical to vote on a piece of legislation today that's going nowhere, that will not pass the Senate, that will not get the president's signature. This is nothing more than a fig leaf so that when we go home in our work period in August, they'll say we did something. We didn't do anything. This is another one house bill that is all about a talking piece to provide some cover for not solving problems on a bipartisan fashion. And I want to thank my colleagues and thank Chairman Hinojosa for his leadership. This time I'd like to recognize from the great state of Texas, Congressman Joaquin Castro. You know, we live in a uh, world now, in a digital age, where stories come and go so quickly. Oftentimes, there are many big stories, even in a single week, that are competing for attention. 
But this episode makes us stop and ask ourselves, who are we as a nation? Are we today in America the nation that rescued Jews from the Soviet Union, that rescued Cubans and Vietnamese from communism and took them in? Or are we the nation that allows, without condemnation, people in ski masks with AK-47s to go down to the border and terrorize young children? We have to ask ourselves what it means to be a refugee in this world in the 21st century. As I mentioned on the House floor, just as our adversaries have changed, they're not always state actors. It's not Cuba alone anymore. It's not Iraq by itself. It's non-state actors like Al-Qaeda and the Haqqani Network and ISIS. So too have the refugees of the world changed. And they're not just being persecuted by communist dictators. A drug cartel kills people too. We have to recognize that and also adapt our policies. That's what this is about. And we can't forget about all of those tens of thousands of kids who have come here seeking refuge. And lastly, I want to say thank you to the people of Texas and the people of America who have shown such incredible compassion in reaching out to do everything they can to offer food and shelter and clothing to the kids who have come here. Thank you. I'd like to, at this time, recognize from the great state of New Mexico, Congresswoman Michelle Lujan Grisham. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you can see, we are all here joined uh, in, in what's even greater than solidarity, because it's clear that we're working to protect these children and their families. New Mexico is a home to one of the detention facilities, and I visited that facility. And who I met were mothers and toddlers. These are one-year-old, two, and three. The average trip, seven days. The horrors that they describe, which you've heard again today, are real. And I can't understand, I don't think anyone here can understand, in a country and state by state working to enhance our trafficking laws, that in addressing this situation on the border, what we're going to do is we're going to repeal those trafficking laws and we're going to ignore that human trafficking is real. It's real in this country, it's real abroad, and these children are real victims. So in addition to that, today, we have our Republican colleagues who want to make them victims of politics in this country. This is an effort, no more, no less, than destroying diversity in this country. And the way that we continue to embrace diversity, to make it right, to grow the economy, to solve these issues, to create credibility around the world, is to do comprehensive immigration reform. It is the effort that allows us to do the right things in the right ways, in the right time, in these places, in the Rio Grande Valley, and we aren't going to do it, and we have the ability to do it. And so what you're hearing today is more than frustration, a renewed energy and effort to do what's right for these children, to do what's right for their mothers and fathers who braved them, bravely moved them away against all odds. We don't even talk about the children that we lose along the way. We don't talk about the fact that on their way back, these women are shackled in front of these toddlers. We aren't talking about their real horrors continuing to occur. Let's not let them, not one more child, be a victim of the problem of politics in this country. Let's lead. Let's pass comprehensive immigration reform. Thank you. Next speaker is from the great state of Florida, Congressman Joe Garcia. <clears throat> I would just uh, like to thank uh, the chairman and the leadership for being here. We're looking at uh, possibly one of the most anti-Hispanic Congresses uh, in generations. Not only have they opposed a comprehensive bipartisan bill, yesterday they proposed stripping away existing legal rights that children have on the border. They want to strip away rights of half a million uh, DACA children that have already been considered. They want to repeal the, administrative, the administration's policy to be able to deal with this, the flexibility to deal with this in the law. And they're, they've been blocking any, any a chance at passing comprehensive immigration reform. 
uh, this requires a response, and I, I greatly appreciate the way that our colleagues have stood with us, with the Hispanic Caucus, and with this nation of immigrants. Thank you. From the great state of California, Lucille Royball Allard, Congresswoman. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and I, too, want to acknowledge the tremendous leadership of Speaker uh, Pelosi and Steny Hoyer uh, in the tremendous support that they have given us, as well as the leadership of, uh, of our chair, uh, Ruben Hinojosa. You know, two weeks ago, I visited uh, the border, and I saw firsthand these small, young children held in tiny cells and forced to sleep on cold concrete floors and benches. And the treatment of, of these vulnerable kids, as you've heard over and over again, uh, they're coming here because they are fleeing the horrors in their own country. And frankly, as an American, as a mother, as a grandmother, I was absolutely shocked by what I saw. I had heard the stories, but it isn't until you actually see the conditions that these children are in that you realize just how awful, awful those conditions uh, are. So what is happening today uh, and this week under the Republican leadership is absolutely outrageous, irresponsible, and quite frankly, it is absolutely un-American. We have a humanitarian crisis at the border. And passing a clean supplemental bill will help to alleviate the tragic conditions uh, that these children are under. And it, but instead, the Republicans you know, continue to try and put on all these riders on, on a bill, not riders that are going to be more humanitarian and to help these children, but rather punitive and unnecessary provisions that make it impossible to pass a bill. And I just want to point out one thing, because uh, we heard this on the floor today. You know, Republicans like to scare the public and tell them that, that you know, well, it's really about protecting our borders. But let me tell you, that is a myth. Our borders are, in fact, safe. In fact, border crossings are substantially down, and border towns like El Paso, Texas, which is, you know, right across from, from Ciudad Juarez, one of the most violent, El Paso, Texas has been ranked as the safest city in the U.S. for the fourth straight year. So what is really happening? It's not about acting in the best interests of our, our, our country or in the best interest of these children. It's about uh, writing a bill that is even meaner than the one they tried to pass yesterday, more punitive, simply to appease the, uh, the extremists in the Republican Party. Once we pass this crisis, then what we need to ultimately do is to pass comprehensive immigration reform to av avoid further crises in the future. From El Paso, the last speaker, and then we will take some questions from the media, is uh, the, Congress, the Congressman Beto Roark. Thank you, Chairman Hinojosa. Uh, and I agree with my colleague from California. I believe the majority is trying to scare the country about the situation that we face at our border with Mexico. And I think they've succeeded in scaring themselves because what but fear could cause you to remove due process for kids who are fleeing horrific violence. We're talking about 11-year-olds in Honduras with their throats slit, four-year-old girls who show up in plastic bags showing time, uh, signs of being brutalized and tortured and are now dead. Uh, ask yourself, those of you who have kids or, or know little kids, how would your eight-year-old do in an accelerated process within seven days having to apply for a T visa or a U visa or asylum in a foreign language without an attorney or be sent back to your country? That's exactly what Republicans are talking about doing now. What but fear could cause them to send the National Guard to the border when it is, it is as safe as it has ever been? El Paso, the safest city in the country. The mayor of Brownsville told us uh, earlier last week his city is safe. San Diego, uh, on the other end of the, the uh, U.S.-Mexico border, uh, the third safest city in this country. So let's not be motivated by fear. 
Instead, let's be motivated out of strength, out of our conscience, and out of the conviction and courage to do the right thing for this country and for the kids who need us most. This time I'm going to invite uh, Luis Gutierrez, our senior of the caucus, um, Jose Serrano from the city of New York City, and uh, Javier to please come to the podium and uh, start taking questions from the media. Mm -hmm. Javier, you want to get up here, Javier? Please. Sure. So we're we'll open for questions. Mike. Well, many of you have already been down to the border. What is your understanding of the practical implications if, well, when Congress leaves without having done anything on the border? President Jay Johnson has said that ICE money is going to run out this month. You guys won't be back until next month. Uh, border Patrol money is going to run out in the middle of next month. What happens practically if the money runs out? Mm -hmm. Any juggle funds? Anyone who didn't speak on this? Any indication that they can <coughs> I'll tell you one thing, um, and I won't talk to the humanitarian point of view on this issue. Um, the crisis will only get worse at the border. More kids will come. More families will come. The fact is that there are 34,000 detention beds. There are a thousand of them for those that are with children and families. Those are filled. And so as people come to the border, the border will be less secure unless you put the appropriate funding so that you can do what the president wishes to do, which is to bring order and control. You know, about a third fewer children are coming than at the height of the crisis at the border in June. A third fewer are coming. The presidents of the three Central American countries have made a huge effort and have cooperated. The children aren't really going to have hearings in three years. They may not get fair hearings, but they're going to get hearings in three to four weeks. They're expediting. Everything the Republicans say they want to happen is actually happening already. Um, we want to make sure, as Lucille said, that the children aren't in a bed the way it was described. Yeah, as a member of the Appropriations Committee, I can tell you that <clears throat> my experience has been along with Lucille and, and uh, Ed Pastor, who are also members, that whenever we don't fund what we are supposed to fund on time, the crisis just grows. And the people that are on the ground trying to do their work cannot do their work. And so the Republicans now can complain about the situation, not funding it or funding it improperly, not backing up the people on the ground makes it just worse. Next question. Bueno, si no hay los fondos para hacer el trabajo que el presidente quiere hacer y los líderes que están allí en la frontera, eh, la situación se pone peor, especialmente durante un periodo donde el Congreso no va a estar en sesión legislativa. O sea, a, ellos creen, el Partido Republicano creen, que no dar los fondos necesarios le da una oportunidad a ellos de hacer un comentario político. Lo único que van a hacer es hacer crecer la crisis, crecer el sufrimiento humano y crecer la percepción de que este país dejó de ser el país que le abre las puertas a los necesitados. Y eso crea diferentes problemas de diferentes índoles. Otra pregunta aquí enfrente. What do you make of that dynamic? Let's see if uh, Joe would like to take sure, that question. Sure. Well, <clears throat> look, I, I um, let me begin a, a, as a as a Cuban American, right, uh, who who realizes that I have special immigratory rights. You know, my parents received special treatment. I'm appalled that uh, Senator Cruz, who not only received it from this country but his native Canada, those special migratory rights, leads the charge to strip away people's rights. It is, it is absolutely unconscionable. And uh, it, it is my belief that uh, they, they're stuck and they're not gonna be able to, but uh, to be quite honest, they can't come to agreement with themselves. And uh, uh, to some degree, you saw yesterday uh, the tail wagging the dock. And as the afternoon progressed, their ability to hold their votes got worse and worse. Thank you. Another question here in front. As all of you know, the expectation that there might not be a vote at all. Um, so 
I'm wondering what you think the significance, politically or otherwise, is of the fact that House Republicans are, are going to proceed with this vote. Uh, one member this morning said, we'll have left town and the only bill that we'll have passed is the work of House Republicans. Javier uh, had negotiations with the leadership on the other side of the aisle. Javier, would you handle that? The president made it very clear earlier this week that what the House Republicans were putting together to address the humanitarian crisis was not only insufficient, it makes things worse. And so the president made it very clear that won't ever become law because if you're making the situation worse by passing that particular measure, what good does that do? And so for Republicans to continue on this march because of the pressure of their far, far right means they're not interested in getting things done. When you do nothing, you end up in crises. We're in crises because this House is, is choosing to do nothing. Last question. Yes, speak up uh, and please get up closer. Javier, is that in the uh, in the room? That's we've been heard, we've heard that they might try to do that at some point. I'll try to just answer that real quickly. Look, they say they're the family of fam. They say they are the party of family values. The law is very clear. <clears throat> when there were calmer times and more level-headed debates and discussion, such as the one we had in 2002, the one we had in 2007, and the law we passed in 2008. <laughs> The Congress decided, even Louis Gomer, even Mr. King from Iowa, even Lamar Smith, together with all of us that were here, we all agreed together that we would put the interest of the children first. And by putting the interest of the children first, we said they should be reunited first and foremost with family that they have. What better family to put them with than their moms and dads? That's really what they want to do is be destructive in that nature. Let me also say that, look, unfortunately, the way they speak about a community, it's almost as though the children, we are a vile, repugnant community to them that they vilify and demonize in every one of their statements. And I think that that is a sad commentary because there are dozens of members of the Republican Party and the Republican caucus that I know and that we know and that we work with every day. And we know this is not a reflection of who they are and their values. But apparently the loudest, meanest, most vile voices are the ones that are dominating their caucus. And that's unfortunate. En español. Mire, esto tiene que ver con proteger los derechos de los niños hoy. Proteger los derechos de los soñadores, más de 700 mil jóvenes que tienen permiso de trabajo. Y proteger los derechos de millones de personas que el presidente tiene la habilidad y que nosotros hemos peticionado como pueblo que él actúe. Y ellos saben que él va a actuar pronto. Ellos quieren mantener esta crisis para condenar a nuestra comunidad a una comunidad sin derechos para nuestros niños en este momento, nuestros soñadores y para millones de otros que el presidente ha dicho que él quiere ayudar. Eso es lo que ellos quieren. Quieren castigar nuestra comunidad. Y ese castigo va a ser recibido con un castigo electoral. Asegúrense en que nosotros no nos vamos a olvidar del maltrato que nuestra comunidad ha recibido. Gracias. Para concluir en español también el uh, señor de New York City, José Serrano. Muchas gracias. Uh, al fin de cuentas, estamos unidos. Unidos no solamente como hispanos, pero unidos en representación de los demócratas. Pidiendo que algo suceda que no esperamos para que el Partido Republicano eh, deje de volverse loco y se, siente, se sienta un poco más humano. At the end of the day, the question may not only be who are these young people and why are they here? The question could also be, who is the United States and why we're here as a Congress? We've never turned our backs on people that are hurting, and we shouldn't start now. Este país nunca le ha dado la espalda a los que duele. En mi ciudad de Nueva York hay una estatua de la libertad que no solamente protege, pero invita a que vengan los necesitados y los que sufren. Eso es lo que somos como nación. Eso es lo que tenemos que seguir siendo. 
y ese otro partido quiere olvidarse de eso y de nuestra historia que nos trajo a este punto como una gran nación. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Bueno,